Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's uh, Kopi Time Crypto Night. Now, uh, welcome, welcome. We'll let everyone uh, come on tonight. So tonight we have, um, well, this week actually, um, Bitcoin has actually gone above 11,000, right? 11,000 USD. And uh, so tonight we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about, about Bitcoin. We're going to talk about um how um, the valuation of Bitcoin was done by um, a pretty famous um, uh, uh, investment manager uh, called uh, Catherine Wood. Uh, she is the founder of Arc Investment uh, Management, and uh, she is uh, from the traditional finance side, um, and she has outperformed uh, quite a few, um, uh, quite a lot of other funds. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just switch over to my screen. Um, yeah, so now uh, for those of you who have just joined us, uh, please don't forget to subscribe and um, don't forget to uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to uh, like. Right. Uh, hi JP. Uh, hi Daniel. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Um, so yeah. So yeah. Don't. Um, uh, let me uh, switch. Let me share my screen now. Okay, share that. Okay, here we go. Um, let me just present that. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Uh, now, don't forget to share this stream with your friends. Uh, those who have just uh, joined us, uh, feel free to 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 share this, uh, subscribe, and like, and and share this with your friends. Um, hi, Laihi. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, welcome for joining us. Okay. So, look, it's exciting times all uh, all around, right? Um, I guess, uh, uh, you know, uh, folks are pumped uh, because, uh, you know, Bitcoin uh, uh, first went uh, over 10,000 and then this week it went across uh, over 11,000. Now, before I begin, uh, let's just... Uh, go. Okay, let me just go through the disclaimer. Uh, you know... Uh, whatever is discussed tonight you know is for informational purposes only right uh you know don't don't go out and buy bitcoin or or, or take any any action um after after listening to me right this is for informational purposes only uh please consult a, a financial professional for your own uh your own uh decisions or finance uh, investment decisions okay um okay So now I will just move on. Okay, so where are we now, right? Let's let's just uh, let's do a recap, and let's just see where we're at. Um, so year to date, Bitcoin has actually is actually up fifty five percent. Now you know for those of you folks who are uh, in stocks, right? This is obviously not as exciting, right? Fifty five percent. What's fifty five percent? You know, uh, other glove stocks have gone up multiple X's. So, um, but look, nonetheless, in the in the cryptoverse, uh, which is still a pretty small uh, community, uh, but it is it is still uh, pretty exciting times. Especially those of you who had, um, you know, uh, if you went in uh, in twenty eighteen, for example, uh, near the lows, you know, uh, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. Uh, if you managed to buy then and and you held on, uh, look, you know, uh, you you've done well. You've done really well in the time frame um, that's there. So. Uh, yeah. So okay. So today we're at uh, just a just a touch above eleven thousand, and uh, we started the year uh, around the seven thousand uh, mark. Okay. So month to date, right? Uh, we're actually up twenty one percent. So you can see we started around here, right? Uh, which is what around the nine thousand. Oops. Yeah, we started around the uh, the nine thousand mark, and then um, we're up here now at the eleven thousand. Okay, I keep clicking clicking that thing. Sorry, uh, let me just present that again. Okay, here we go. Okay, so um, now as of today, right? Uh, so this is according to Glassnode. Um, 
so in the slides I, I actually the links are actually within the slides so when i share that and if you download that you can i uh, just click on the links uh so 93 percent of all bitcoin addresses are actually in the money right so which means uh potentially what you could read from that is that well uh since most of the bitcoin addresses are in the money um they could pretend there could be some selling pressure right uh, some selling pressure might happen uh but essentially those who do have bitcoin um, are actually um, profitable right now right so that's good now so why did bitcoin prices rally so we 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 want to let, let's just let's just try to figure out what happened right like what happened to that search why why that search happened right where that search came up here uh, so on july 23rd um uh you know crypto custody uh got the green light uh in america for american banks right so that was uh that was really positive news um you know the u.s banks were given a regulatory green light to to essentially custody uh your cryptocurrencies uh now what does that mean like what are the implications uh when you say that the bank uh can store can custody your bitcoin what does that make bitcoin i don't know what does a bank store for you what do you go to the bank for right um you 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 go to the bank to store your well you you obviously you know your paycheck goes there the money essentially the bank stores your money for you right so now um they're saying that well banks can also store your cryptocurrencies so does that mean that they're acknowledging that cryptocurrencies or you know bitcoin is money uh hi charmy uh welcome good evening uh yeah so does, does that mean that that it is um it is it, it is now starting to look like money right when the banks are now in uh banks are saying yeah sure we will you know they've given it the green light to store it um obviously you know the, the quote from that is that um they wanted to ensure that they meet the uh the needs of what the customers are asking for so there must be more and more customers saying hey you know um I've got all these Bitcoin and I, I, I want you to, I want you to custody. I want to, I want to keep it at the bank because uh, obviously uh, they don't want to self custody, right? They don't want to keep it themselves for whatever reason. I mean, it could be for security reasons. Uh, they might, you know, uh, let's say they bought in uh, Bitcoin at a few cents, right? And they bought a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. Um, now they have so many Bitcoins, they're actually afraid to get robbed. They don't want to keep it uh, at home. Um, and, you know, they can't memorize that 24 word phrase, right? So um, the safest play would uh, would be for someone to, to to take on that risk, right, of uh, storing your your uh, your bitcoins safely for you. So um, what else happened? So okay, so uh, if we look at um, uh, you know last year in June uh, uh, 2019, um, there is a bank, uh, you know, uh, Mellon. Now. They were over, so they they oversee uh, thirty one trillion uh, of assets, right? Um, and they they began providing uh, digital asset custody services, right, or safekeeping uh, for BACT. And BACT is owned by ICE, which is the Intercontinental Exchange, uh, which actually owns the New York Stock Exchange, right? There's a lot of uh, connection here, but but yeah, so they you know so they they now. Uh, uh, provide the custodial services for BACT, right, which is ICE. And and now even the owner of the New York Stock Exchange is getting into into this game, right? Um, now, what happened this year? So May, May um, in 2020, right? Uh, JP Morgan uh, reported that they, uh, they, they began providing uh, banking services to uh, Coinbase, which is one of the largest uh, crypto exchanges in America, and also Gemini Trust. Uh, Gemini Trust, for those of you who don't know, they are actually owned by the Winklevoss twins, right? The guys that uh, had a battle with uh, Mark Zuckerberg over Facebook. So, um, so yeah, so, so now, now these big banks, these big names are getting into the game. Now, if you were in the if you were in crypto say back in 2017 right um actually i'll talk about it in the further slides but actually uh 
No, okay, I saw a comment from uh, Daniel. That's right, Daniel. This is getting interesting, isn't it? I mean, um, uh, they, 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 they definitely want um, a, a piece of the pie, right? They, they want, uh, no matter what, uh, they're trying to put enough and do it. No crypto the basis does not need banks. Correct. That's right. Essentially, you don't need banks. But, um, you know, the mindset, the, the mindset of all of us is that, I mean, we've been conditioned that, uh, you know, in the existing and in the current monetary system, which has been very stable for the last, you know, as, as, I, as I can remember it, as, since I've been born, right? Um, is, is, is very stable. So I guess, you know, uh, humans are creature of habits. We're just used to the norm. We're used to what we, what we do. And so, um, uh, we, we, we just think of the bank, right? So I guess the natural progression, uh, would probably be the bank, right? So, um, pretty soon, can you imagine you would log on to your Maybank to you or your CIMB clicks, you go in there and, um, you could convert some of your ringgit into Bitcoin because today has a good price. You converted it, and then you see your you you can see in your in in in, in your Maybank to you uh, uh, login. Oh, you now have you know X number of Bitcoin. Okay, then you log out. Uh, you log back in again. Uh, yeah, you know. Oh, you still have Bitcoin, and uh, now you might want to send some Bitcoin. Uh, you wanna you know you you uh you know we always pay our bills and this and that. Uh, so maybe you pay your bills using the Bitcoin, right? And you, you actually do the transfer. So, um, but. Yes, Daniel, you're right. Uh, technically, you can actually custody it yourself. You can have it on your on, on your phone. You can have it on uh, on on you know those hardware wallets, um, and you you just send it right. Uh, but obviously, uh, that's for the retailers, right? Or that's for the for you and I, right? The 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 average Joe's on the street. But then um, when it comes to institutional investors, right? When it comes to uh, institutional players, uh, to be honest. Um, I one, I don't think they are allowed to self custody, and two, uh, so obviously they 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 need to have a custodian to hold it for them, right? So it's it's actually required by the regulators, uh, and and two, they're, they're actually not they're not interested in managing of you know man, it's it's a little bit fiddly if you if you've actually uh, played with it before, and obviously there's all the risks associated with it because if you're talking about institutional investors, there's going to be you know, much, much uh, larger sum. So how do you uh, ensure that, that that it's all safe? So um, this is where all these big banks come in, right? And and this is where they provide these custodial services. Okay, so moving on. Um, what else happened uh, this month? So on the 27th of July, so gold hit a record high, right? Uh, so gold is uh, at an all-time high. And um, let's see what else happened. Yep. Uh, yep. Right. Right. So year to date, gold is actually up twenty eight percent. Right. That's quite a rally for gold. I I think um, gold's total market cap is at nine trillion dollars now, and I think we started the year with um, seven point eight trillion, maybe. Uh, anyway, but it's 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 definitely at nine trillion dollars now. Right. So, uh, gold has hit a record high. And um, you know th these were uh, some of the things that that uh, Goldman Sachs had said said that the dollar is in danger of losing its status as the world's reserve currency. Now, uh, for those of you, uh, I, I guess most of you would be plugged in, and most of you would be aware that you know the U.S. Federal Reserve um, has declared that they will do uh, unlimited unlimited quantitative easing. Uh, what does that mean? I, I, I think a lot of people did not know what quantitative easing meant. Um, look, it's just a fancy word for um, creating more money supply, right? So more money supply is being uh, pumped into the financial system to try and prop up um, what's happening globally right now. I mean, right now, the, the whole world's businesses have uh, come to a halt, right? Uh, it's, it's because of the virus. So, um, so in order to prop up the, uh, the the economy and so that there is less suffering, um, the Federal Reserve Bank uh, has declared that they will create as much money as is required uh, to prop up the, the economy, right? Uh, okay, so uh, we've got Emery uh, who has just uh, put in a comment. Uh, uh, so Emery says, if Bitcoin can be held by custody, uh, it will start becoming common side hedge funds. Yep, yep. That's right. Uh, in, and in fact, you know, Emery, it, it, it already, um, 
you know, quite a number of hedge funds and um, VCs have actually come into space, especially, uh, I, I think there was a stat that I read uh, from Catherine Wood. Um, in 2018, in America, of all the funds that were registered, 20% uh, were actually crypto funds, right? Um, but you're right. With with custodial services, uh, now the big now the big boys can actually come in, right? The 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 uh, the institutional players can actually come in. Now, uh, the other thing that was said uh, in, a, in in this article, and again, you can link on it uh, by clicking on the link, is that the um, so you know so so there's a couple of things, right? So now we've got unlimited uh, we've got unlimited QE, which is quantitative easing, which is just a fancy word of we're going to create as much new money and pump into the financial system as we can, right? Uh, and, and what happens when you dilute something, when you add more to it, you know? if So if you think of uh, your portfolios as, as asset classes and each of your asset classes has a percentage of your total worth, right? Um, you'll be in trouble if most a, a large percentage of your portfolio was held in cash, obviously, right? Because um, if if that amount or, or the value is being depreciated because of the addition of extra money into the system, that means the value uh, that, that you have in cash is worth less and less by the day, um, then, then, uh, then, then you're in danger, right? Now, obviously, again, don't take this as uh, financial advice. This is not financial advice. This is for uh, educational and informational purposes only. So, so now there is this fear, but you know, uh, to have a balanced view. On the other hand, um, the U.S. dollar is also the world's reserve currency, and it is also the most uh, sought-after currency in the world. Right? There, there are a lot of emerging economies uh, where they prefer the U.S. dollar to the local currency. So, um, so nonetheless, whilst there is uh, unlimited money creation of the US dollar, uh, there's still a lot of demand for the US dollar outside of the US. So it actually, you know, it does kind of soak it out as well. So just to give a more balanced view. So, okay, so then they say that the uh, Federal Reserve um, having already swelled its balance sheet uh, by about $2.8 trillion this year, right? Uh, and obviously they're going to continue to, uh, to, to, to print more, right? So obviously um, what the Federal Reserve is going to do is they're going to basically purchase a lot of the the, the bonds and, and and debt right so um, so there is there is, there are talks um, and and there is this worry that um, you know the 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 increase in the so in the inflation of the money supply is going to debase or devalue uh, each um, you know each dollar note that you have right or the amount of money that you have so obviously here what are we saying are, are we saying well does that mean I don't keep all my money in cash or how much of a percentage should I keep in cash? And uh, what about the rest of the allocation? What asset classes uh, should that money be, be, be put into? Uh, so if you start thinking like that, it's almost like, well, it's not so much an investment, but more of an insurance. Like, do I try to keep my money uh, from devaluing, right? So the, the thought process changes a little bit. Okay, so what else happened? Um, well, on July 28th, um, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum uh, or ETH, um, uh, the other crypto, the, the second largest uh, market cap, uh, Ethereum hits a one-year high. Um, it, it was also, uh, it coincided, coincided uh, with the, uh, the five-year, it was the fifth-year anniversary of, uh, of the founding of the Ethereum network, right? Uh, so... Obviously, you know, uh, whilst Ethereum hit a, a, a high, um, there was also the launch of the uh, DeFi. So actually, you know, so in, in 2007, 17, 18, right? Um, 17 was the was was the high, right? Bitcoin hit 20,000. Uh, then start uh, January of 2018, you know, still pretty high. But the whole of um, 2018 was essentially a bear market. It, it dropped 80 to 85 percent, right? The price of Bitcoin dropped 80 to 85 percent. Now, whilst everyone was, uh, you know, the, the market retracted and everyone's a bit a bit worried, um, the developers were very, very, very hard at work, right? So some of some of the some of the 
ICOs that actually happened in uh, 2018, uh, 17, right? They worked hard, right, in the last two years to actually build the systems up. And a lot of them actually came onto mainnet. So when you say mainnet, uh, essentially these products were launched onto, right? And and um, so DeFi, uh, you know, these DeFi, uh, so DeFi stands for decentralized finance, right? For those of you who are, who are new and, and don't know what that means. So, um, the, so the the concept of decentralized finance is the is to uh, uh, is to disintermediate the middle person, the middleman, right, uh, in financial matters. So, for example, uh, right now, if you were to go onto a central uh, uh, a centralized uh, uh, exchange to then buy your Bitcoin. Right, so that centralized exchange is run by an intermediary, right? To to uh, facilitate uh, that transaction of you buying and selling bitcoins. Um, so DeFi is where you replace um, that intermediary with code, right? You replace it with software code, and you can just do the same function without having the intermediary. Uh, so essentially, a lot of these new DeFi. Uh, projects uh, came live, right? Uh, it, it became uh, onto the mainnet, and uh, you know, there's been a craze. Um, you know, that there's there's this uh, phrase called yield farming. Um, you know, where you can you can pledge. So almost like the, you know, in fixed deposits, but you put your money into into the bank, right? And then you get paid that interest. So now, when you're holding crypto, you can do the same, and you can earn an interest on it, depending on the supply and demand uh, for that crypto, right? So essentially, um, yeah, so essentially DeFi went a little bit crazy and look at those returns, right? Um, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's pretty nuts, right? Um, so then um, this was probably intentionally left blank. Uh, the, big, the bigger question, right? So where do we go from here? All right, what's next? Well, let's, uh, let's see what the experts say, right? So you've got Fidelity. Right. Um, so they they um, obviously they're American based, right? So they they make a push into 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 Europe. Um, you've got Standard Chartered, which is a bank, right? Um, they're, lo they're they're launching their institutional crypto custody services, right, or solutions. Now, I think um, in Malaysia you you'd be quite uh, you'd be familiar with that uh, with the Standard Chartered uh, Bank, right? So they're getting into crypto. Um, Obviously, back in 2016, Jamie Dimon, right, uh, says uh, he calls Bitcoin a fraud. Uh, but it's funny because um, it was actually his, his uh, what kind of sparked it off was, you know, his daughter actually asked him about Bitcoin and, you know, uh, told him that he should, he should get into it. And, and uh, obviously, uh, J, well, uh, Jamie Dimon didn't, did not agree. Uh, and, you know, perhaps, um, you know, coming from that traditional side, uh, he couldn't see what the fuss was all about. Uh, it wasn't tangible. It was, you know, uh, it was unregulated. It was, um, to him, it was fake. It was, it was, it was a fraud, right? Um, and and that was his perception um, at that point. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, uh, you've got um, uh, those kids, right? Uh, when I say kids, I mean, you know, they, um, now I, I I'm a I'm a Gen Xer, right? So I actually had to learn the internet. I had to figure out what the internet was. Um, I lived in a world where there was no internet, and then and then I, I I came into a world where there was, and I literally grew up with the internet, right? I kind of saw, uh, you know, I I I I had to dial in via a modem at nine dot six, uh, you know, kilobits per second, and eventually um, now I'm at home and and I get a, a gigabit, right, uh, a second uh, speeds. But um, I had to learn a, a lot of this, but. Much, you know, the much younger generation, um, they grew up uh, in a very digital world, right? Um, the internet was like having uh, electricity, was, was like having running water at home, right? It was just a given. So a lot of the, the, the younger generation uh, that have grown up with it, uh, they've also grown up with games, right? So in games, you 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 know, you, um, there are a lot of, you, you can use tokens to purchase things and all that. Uh, so this concept of uh, this virtual money, right, uh, in the game, uh, that, that's a very normal thing. So a lot of the, the younger gen generation actually grew up, uh, and, and so some of them were lucky enough to discover Bitcoin, and they're like, cool, right? This is, this is cool. 
Um, some of them have managed to actually keep uh, a, a lot of it, right? And um, uh, like this one, uh, this kid here, the 20 year old, uh, high school dropout, bought a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin at the age of 12. I still remember this, uh, and he look he looks much older now, but um, I, I do remember um, an interview with him, and he was still uh, a really young kid. His um, his grandma gave him a thousand dollars for his birthday. I can't remember how old he was. Uh, maybe when it was maybe when it was twelve, um, and uh, and he he put it all on Bitcoin, and uh, and and he's never looked back ever since, right? Um, because he saw the value. So so this young younger generation saw the value. And now think about this. Uh, Jamie Diamond obviously, well, Jamie Diamond obviously is older than me, and so he never saw it. His daughter saw it, right? You've got this uh, twenty-year-old now who was twelve when he discovered Bitcoin, and to him, in his mind, it made sense, right? Uh, hey, I can use Bitcoin to, I don't know, buy a shield, uh, buy uh, uh, an extra character, or I can buy, uh, you know, this special weapon that allows me to slay the dragon, right? So um, it, it's a very natural thing; it comes naturally to me. It's like you know, for us to to go to uh, uh, go to the sink and you know turn on the tap and water will come up. It's just a given, right? So to them, to buy Bitcoin and to use Bitcoin on the internet or on, in 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 the gaming world or in the cyber world, it's just it's it's natural. It's normal, right? So um, we move on to Arc Investment Management now. Uh, this this lady here is uh, an extremely uh, uh, smart lady now. Um, she might look young, uh, but apparently uh, she has been around for a very long time in investment circles. Um, and so they bought, right? Uh, so Arc Investment uh, is, is, is a company and uh, is a public, public company, right? Uh, investment company. And they bought uh, Bitcoin now. But because they, they, they work in a regulated environment, uh, they were not permitted and not allowed to buy Bitcoin as is. Um, uh, so she had to buy what's known as a GBTC. So GBTC is uh, actually by Grayscale. Uh, what Grayscale did was um, they, they essentially formed a trust and uh, people uh, and with that trust, they would take the money that the investors would put in to buy Bitcoin and then issue shares. So essentially this shares is now OTC. So it's, uh, it's available to um, accredited investors. And so uh, essentially you bought a share, right? Uh, and, and that share held so much Bitcoin, right? So essentially um, she bought it when it was below two, uh, $250. They held it, they held it, they held it uh, until they got to about fifteen dollars to $20,000 before she sold it, right? So that was an ATX uh, gain. Now she... Uh, she uh, now, Catherine Wood is actually a traditional, uh, um, she comes from a traditional finance world, right? So she, she, she's used to stocks and, um, and, and all that. But essentially, she bought into the concept of what Bitcoin is and what Bitcoin can be, right? Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about, about her, right? So um, as you can see, so they, you know, um, ARK has actually let, uh, you know, uh, the top 10 funds right of total returns in recent years and and they've they they have beat the competition right uh, by quite a quite a lead right uh, yeah, blackrock was second but they were first in terms of the innovation um, etf uh, so yep so essentially she's a uh, 11 uh, billion dollar asset manager uh, top performing etf globally right uh, and uh, <clears throat> she's um, so the, the theme or the strategy that, that uh, ARC uh, goes with is disruptive innovation. So uh, for those of you who are old enough, you remember back in the late 90s and early 2000s, um, the concept of creative destruction, right? It's essentially the same, right? So creative destruction uh, and, and, um, and disruptive innovation, it, it talks about how do you do something uh, entrenched, right? something uh and and essentially disrupt uh basically disruptive technologies right disrupt the the the, the status quo or the norm of doing something and then uh uh, uh uh essentially obliterating um the competition it's like when the car was invented right 
and horses became obsoleted, right? It was like a total destruction of an industry because this new way of doing things was way better, right? So that's 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 essentially the the strategy that art goes what goes by, uh, and and I'll share a bit more. Okay, okay. So I, I just described it, right? What is disruptive um, innovation? Um, the innovation, uh, the introduction of a new product or service that permanently changes an industry landscape by creating simplicity, convenience, and accessibility while driving down costs. So essentially, like I said, the car and it just killed the horse and cart industry, right? Um, so if you if you look at this, I mean, these are some some very disruptive technologies uh, over time, right? So you have uh, you know the steam engine, right? Uh, in 1781, uh, you know, the internal combustion engine was shows I talked about uh, the telephone where he wanted to sell his company to what was that? It tends that anyway, they, they passed on it. Uh, electric lighting, um, the airplane, the TV, the microprocessor in 1971, right, uh, which has essentially revolutionized, changed the way we, we live. Uh, the mobile phone, right, uh, for those of you who are old enough, um, you would remember the massive, massive mobile phone. Uh, for the locals, it's called the Dai Dai, right, the, the really big Motorola one. Uh, then uh, the internet came around, right, 1990s, um, uh, and then, uh, as I said, I, I grew up in the internet, right, so I, I jumped on the, the internet uh, in Malaysia in, I think, 1994, right, or thereabouts. Um, and then, uh, you know, they started spicing, like, the, the, the genome sequencing, they had to, and, and, and they had to essentially put that data somewhere and store it somewhere. So, okay, so these were all disruptive innovation, right? Um, so what does Arc think um, is driving innovation today, right? So uh, there are a few themes, uh, I think four to five themes, right? Um, so there is genomics, uh, as I mentioned before. Um, there is the robotics and automation. Uh, now, you know, a lot of people fear that uh, by bringing in robotics and, and, and automation, uh, it's actually, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. Uh, but if you if you look at history historically, right, um, every time there is an advancement uh, in technology, uh, it actually creates more jobs. Uh, it creates more jobs than it destroys. Um, it may destroy uh, jobs that are probably a little bit more manual, but then the the new jobs that come about, right, um, uh, uh, that will be like you know uh, like new jobs actually get created. So if you think about it over time. Uh, more jobs get created than than uh, than jobs that that get this jobs that get destroyed, right? So that's robotics and automation, uh, power storage. By this, I mean you know look at the uh, the Tesla Tesla car, right? The electric car, um, big data and cloud. Now one of the main tech trends and themes, right? Um, I uh, you know uh, essentially I you know I I'm a big tech uh, fan. Right, uh, I uh, it, it is my passion um, because I, I see how it change, you know, uh, how emerging technologies actually uh, have the power to change our lives, like like it changes our lives in ways unimaginable. So uh, so I, I'm actually a huge fan of of uh, following the tech trends and uh, essentially trying to figure out how um, how it's going to affect us and how it's actually going to affect the way we live, right? Um, so big data, uh, obviously, everyone knows. Everyone um, is now on the internet, right? I still remember when I went, when I got into the internet, I was one of the few early ones. Um, I, I would struggle to, you know, actually had to ask someone, oh, do you have email, right? Uh, do you have an email address? Uh, and most would say no, right? Uh, until eventually, now it's 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 like you would be weird if you did not have a digital footprint, if you didn't have a digital presence now. All that information that is traveling uh, is stored, right? Is is it is it is stored somewhere now? You know, they also say that um, data is the new currency, right? Obviously, uh, um, a lot of um, a lot of companies 
uh, uh, value this information. I mean, think about Google, right? Uh, Google gives you free access to email, uh, free access to maps, but what do they get in return? So nothing's really for free. Uh, you pay them by giving them your data, obviously, right? And the more data they collect, uh, the more they can analyze, right? And this is where uh, uh, AI and deep learning, right, uh, in, uh, where where it can figure out and 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 watch, uh, see what patterns happen, um, and then you know they'll get a lot more insights from that. Now that last one is Bitcoin, right? So Arc has these five categories um, uh, in terms of their portfolio strategy, right? So they are into uh, uh, innovative, uh, 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 sorry. Um, Disruptive innovation right? uh, or creative destruction, as, as we used to call it back then. Um, so essentially, that's the strategy, right? Um, so before the creation of, uh, of, of Bitcoin, a, a non-government-backed monetary system seemed neither feasible nor imaginable, right? Uh, but after Bitcoin was invented, um, all of a sudden, right? Um, all these things, it, it, it just it just opened up uh, all these possibilities. Um, I, I won't go too much into um, in, into this, um, but essentially, uh, I, you, you can download the, the slides because it's uh, uh, it'll be there. So now we're going to talk about the three use cases. Now, so so. Catherine would talk about um, three three main uh, use cases for for Bitcoin, right? And uh, she talks about the uh, uh, she talks about actually so as part of um, part of Arc Investment, they do a lot of what's known as first principles uh, approach to their research, right? And so they, they they also do a lot of modeling, as you would imagine. Um, and you wouldn't want to actually go to a fund manager who doesn't who don't do their own research, right? They do a lot of modeling. They 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 do a lot of res, uh, uh, research in order to justify what decision to make, which financial what the financial decision to make, right? Uh, on on your investment. So um, they came up with three big ones, right? Uh, three big ones that. Uh, there were a lot of other ones, but these three big ones really stood out, right? Uh, okay, so we talk about, um, so, you know, the, there's an example of Zimbabwe, right? Steps closer to hyperinflation with 737% annual rate of inflation. Now, that is just insane. Um, Lebanon becomes the first country in the Middle East and North Africa to enter hyperinflation. Now, these are, these are fairly... Well, very recent articles, right? Um, so the Lebanon one was um, was uh, 29th of July. Um, Zimbabwe is 14th of July, right? So it's just uh, a, a week or two before, two weeks before this. Now, um, if we look at the, so this is the growth of M2 supply. Uh, in economics, uh, you define money uh, by your M0, M1, M2, M3, and so on and so forth, right? It, uh, that there's a different the definition of what it is, but so essentially this is the growth of money supply. What does what does that mean? So if you if you look at this graph, um, more and more money has been created. Now can you imagine um, this year alone when the Federal Reserve said that we are going to have um, unlimited quantitative easing? Um, it's essentially it's going to be a straight line up depending on how much money they they, they create right now uh this is just a, a, a thing from from uh, bloomberg where um bitcoin right uh is touted as, as digital gold right obviously and um the concerns about the health of the world economy and as the and the dollar falls right so um advocates are saying that cryptocurrencies are a way to protect uh, wealth from government action. So it becomes uh, almost a, a a flee to safety, right? You're almost fleeing to safety uh, by putting your money. So instead of holding on to government issued money, right? Um, they're saying that, well, some investors are saying that, well, um, you, you would 
put your money. Your, so what, what else is a store of value? Gold. Gold is a store of value, right? And traditionally, it's been for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, but now you've got this digital gold, right, which some people call, uh, call Bitcoin, uh, is to then another store of value, right? Okay, so now she gave this scenario, right? Um, Catherine gave this scenario. If you were to take all of the money in the world, right, uh, minus uh, you take out the, U the, the US, you take out the you take out Japan uh, and all of Western Europe, right? Oh, actually all of Europe, right? Uh, there'd be roughly about $40 trillion, right? So M2. Uh, so M2 uh, includes cash, checks, savings, accounts, treasury bills, uh, public stocks and bonds, right? So um, uh, uh, th there'll be $40 trillion. Now, uh, so she did this thing where, let's say, so let's say 5% uh, outside, so of all the other countries, let's say 5% of the $40 trillion, uh, it, it is about two trillion dollars, right? Now, so if uh, if you took five percent uh, off of uh, forty trillion, you'd get two trillion, and off the two trillion, um, I think she applied a, a ten percent discounted rate uh, to adjust for the Bitcoin supply inflation, right? Uh, uh, coming in, so you'd end up with one point one trillion. Okay, so just remember that one point one trillion, uh, because. What Catherine says uh, is this, right? Uh, these, if, if there's anything that, that's going to be the takeaway from tonight, right? Um, that these, in her research, they 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 looked at the the, the three things um, that um, uh, the three use cases, right? Uh, that actually comes up to a value, and 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 that is the valuation for Bitcoin. Now that that's that's their that, that's what their research says, right? Um, oh, there's one point one trillion now. So um, so that was the first that was the first case um, the first use case, right? The first use case is digital gold. Uh, well, sorry, first use case is the um, the so we're, we're talking about currency, right? So uh, because people are worried that their cash might get reduced. The, the value of the of holding cash might get reduced. Let's assume that outside of those four economies, right, five percent of the money was put into Bitcoin. Uh, that would be roughly two trillion. But then if you adjust for inflation, that's one point one trillion, right? Now the next use case, right? The the next use case is um, digital gold, right? There's still gold, um, gold gold, right, which is at nine trillion dollars right now. Uh, but you think of Bitcoin, because of its portability, right? Uh, literally, you can go anywhere. Really, you don't even have to carry anything on you. No hardware wallet, no phone. Right? You just memorize the uh, the the the, the uh, twelve to twenty four mnemonic keys, right? Uh, and you're good to go. And it's transportable. You can bring billions with you, right? Uh, if you had that much Bitcoin, uh, it's as digital. So um, for that use case, uh, if we um, uh, now, just just to show you, right? Um, if if we were okay, so okay, so these slides I will um, just go through very quickly because um, okay, so all the value of gold is nine trillion right now, right? So if we were to take uh, say uh, uh, fifteen percent of nine trillion, right? Uh, that means that that's one point three five trillion, right? And so um, now the first number was 1.1 trillion. Uh, now, uh, so that was the first use case, right? The second use case is as digital gold, right? If it were to be gold, uh, so 1.35 trillion. And then the third use case, I uh, took some notes here actually, is the notion, right, um, of confiscation of wealth. Now this has happened before uh, in the history of mankind, where the uh, you know I, I don't think it's going to happen in Malaysia, right? But uh, but you know it can happen anywhere, anytime, uh, without you seeing uh, to see it coming. Where um, the, the the notion of confiscation of wealth, where um, if you had accumulated throughout your lifetime 
uh, an amount of, uh, you know, a substantial amount of wealth, and you were afraid that it would get confiscated, right? Uh, assuming everything's legit, right? Uh, I mean, things can happen. Like I, I remember watching a movie um, uh, uh, about how um, uh, how th there was a change in government and it, it, they had very different ideologies, and then um, you know uh, the, the the new government actually went around and uh, uh, confiscating all uh, the assets of the of the of the wealthy, right? So anyway. Um, so this is just a just just a headline, right? Where uh, uh, so we talk about the protection utility, right? So uh, a sensible allocation uh, to Bitcoin as protection against asset seizures, right? Uh, should approximate the probability of an asset seizure during an individual's lifetime. So again, yeah, in in this model, what they took was they they took um, uh, all the uh, high net worth individuals. The high net worth individuals is defined as um, uh, those who have a million dollars and above, right? Those who have a million dollars and above. So that amounts to forty-six trillion dollars. Uh, and at, let's assume that five percent of the of the forty-six trillion um, that is around one point three trillion adjusted, right? Because uh, they have to do some adjustments. Uh, so you've got. The value uh, now we will go through right. So today, the the price of Bitcoin is at eleven thousand dollars, right? So you've got the value uh, of one Bitcoin today, right? Uh, so against the 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 uh, five percent of the high net worth individuals, which is uh, one point three trillion, right? Now you divide that by the number of uh, circulating Bitcoins, right? So everyone knows that there's going to be only only ever 21 million bitcoins but it gets released into the system uh over time right so right now you have 18 and a half million bitcoin in circulation uh by the time you get to 21 will be the year 2140 okay so if you look at that right just this alone right um it's uh seventy thousand dollars per bitcoin right uh, so catherine believes right she believes that that Bitcoin is actually extremely, extremely undervalued. Um, the problem is that people can't see it yet because, um, so we, we, I'll get to it. Right? Oh, she says people can't see it yet because most investors uh, look backwards. Uh, whereas uh, for ARK investment, they actually look forward, right? Um, they, they, they're looking at the potential uh, of how disruptive um, this technology can be, and how much it can disrupt um, uh, the you know the lives of everyone going forward, right? So the whole the whole theme of disruptive innovation is that you disrupt something and make it more efficient. You disintermediate and you just do it much better, and it actually works out better for mankind, right? So uh, so based on that alone, um, each Bitcoin is seventy thousand. Then if you take a look at that, right? So you've got the 1.1 trillion, right? From the, the well, what we said was uh, currency de uh, uh, demonetization. Uh, then you've got the, you've got the, uh, uh, di as digital gold, right? So as a percentage of the, the $9 trillion uh, in, in the gold, um, uh, gold market right now. And then you've got uh, as a hedge, all right? As a hedge uh, or, uh, against um, the 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 uh, confiscation of wealth right so some people are actually, i mean some people live in places where you, you know the wealthier you get the, the the more fearful you become because um, you know they could legally come in and take away your wealth so so with these three cases right uh, and if you add them all together the the amount right um, they amount to 3.2 trillion dollars so if you do three point two trillion dollars divided by eighteen and a half million Bitcoin, uh, you 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 get to this number, right? So each Bitcoin is one hundred seventy two thousand dollars. Now uh, a lot of people might think this is ridiculous, um, but as with most, um, if you're early in a tech stock, for example, if you were in Amazon back in two thousand and two, 
when it exploded, right, when the dot-com boom happened and it went from $126 down to six, who would have known? Uh, it actually peaked at, you know, it hit, what, 2200 right? Um, who would have thought that from $6, it could go up to $2,000 over dollars? That would be, be insane. Like, you, you can't even see that. Back then, they're like, well, hey, Amazon, you're not even making money, right? So now uh, you're probably going to get the same reaction. 172,000, you must be joking. Uh, but according to Catherine, uh, that that's the calculation based on their modeling. That, that's what they've come up with, right? So um, uh, it is $11,000 today, right? Um, but really, uh, she sees it as severely undervalued. So if, there, if there's any takeaway from, uh, from, uh, from Catherine's presentation, uh, it was this, right? It was just the, the three uh, main use cases. And um, as I said, right, I'm going to reiterate a bit uh, from the beginning where we talked about how the institutions are coming in, right? Uh, I mean, this is serious money, right? Um, you've got BACT, right? BACT is owned by the, the owners of the New York Stock Exchange, right? Uh, in the ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange. And they own a lot of other uh, stock exchanges around the world as well. Uh, you, you've got Fidelity, right? You've got uh, Cambridge Associates. And then you've got Square. For those of you who don't know Square, uh, in America, there's this cash app. And um, it is also, it's run by Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey is also the CEO of Twitter. And Jack Dorsey, uh, before the coronavirus thing hit, um, he was actually going to move to Africa and live for, live for six months or a few months because I, I think he was, um, he was going to... Uh, uh, he sees the potential of Bitcoin in places like uh, Africa, right, where where there's the, you 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 can you can uh, 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 transact value, right, uh, using Bitcoin. So um, I'll, I'll probably leave you with this, right? So um, you talk about so you know we're all about finding the next big thing, right? That's what Catherine Wood says um, in an inter uh, in an interview with uh, with with uh, Bloomberg. Um, Anyone hewing to the benchmarks, which are backwards looking, uh, they're not about the future, right? They're about what has worked. And, you know, look, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, um, it's okay. Uh, but, but her focus, her strategy is looking into the future and what, uh, what, can, what can change our lives and what can change the world, literally. Um, and so far, it's worked for her. Uh, it's it's worked really well for her. Uh, so they're all about uh, when he says we're all about uh, what is going to work, right? Which means, what is the potential of this technology? How? What is the potential of its adoption? What is the potential that it will be accepted, right, uh, and adopted uh, by the masses, right? And and, and it will it will jump through uh, whatever regulatory hoops that, that that needs to get through what is the potential of that so that's that's where she's into and 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 as i said you know um arc investment they, they look into the five things and one of them is bitcoin or crypto crypto assets right um and and uh, i've got some extra notes here right um she actually has uh one full-time analyst uh who is working on crypto the whole time right now um uh, do know that these analysts don't come cheap, right? Uh, in fact, they're, they're, they're very highly paid. And hit their full-time job uh, uh, is to look into crypto, right? Obviously, they will be looking into uh, uh, energy storage. They'll be looking into genomics and, 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 and also the, the automation and big data. Um, but one, one of them is looking full-time into, into crypto, right? So um, this is... This is uh, this is amazing. Now, now the other thing, maybe uh, I'd like to share a few more stats with you guys, right? So uh, when you talk about Bitcoin, you talk about the Bitcoin network. Um, and when you talk about the Bitcoin network, you, you want to talk about the network value, right? Uh, so I, I checked quickly uh, before coming on the show. So the total network value of Bitcoin right now is around, is around 202 billion, right? But what Catherine is saying, uh, if I go back, is that uh, the network value as of right now should be worth about 3.2 trillion. So uh, in that, she's saying that it is highly, highly, highly undervalued. Uh, so for those of you value investors out there, 
uh, take note, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, so so yeah, so so that's uh, I, I think that there was something else. Um, so she calls she calls Bitcoin right, and this is what I quote uh, from Catherine: um, the most compelling um, alternative asset class of the twenty first century. Right, I quote her. Um, she says it is a is a total new asset. It's a totally new asset class, um, and is the most compelling alternate alternative asset asset of the twenty first century. So. Um, Look, I'm not here to, to, to convince you to go and buy Bitcoin. And by all means, please do not go and buy Bitcoin after listening to me. Uh, I am just a conduit, right? I'm just, um, I, 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 I sat down, I went through and I listened to, to uh, and, and, and read up about uh, on Catherine's uh, presentation. And um, I, I just want to take the gist of it. And, you know, the, the takeaway uh, for me were the three things, right? Uh, were the 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 three use cases, the three biggest use cases, right? The currency, the monetized, uh, Demonetization, uh, it as um, the use case of it as a digital gold, and of obviously the the, the hedge against um, uh, asset seizures, right? Uh, which places uh, Bitcoin uh, value set at one hundred seventy two thousand. So um, with that, um, I think I'm pretty close to the end. Uh, actually, no, wait. This is my last slide, right? So, are you investing in the future or in the past? Um, and so. Yeah, look, uh, I think we probably have maybe two more minutes. Uh, so if there's anyone who, uh, I'm gonna unshare my screen, but if there are any any questions, uh, feel free to 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 send them. Uh, I put it below. Um, JP uh, JP Low has a, has an interesting uh, 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 interesting comment, right? Uh, good way of explaining the price uh, uh, price value divergence, right? Okay, um, Maya. Uh, says uh, Maya says interesting insights to see the top fund firms uh, keeping it on their radar, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, look. So folks, I I, I hope uh, I, I I hope uh, for those of you who are curious about you know Bitcoin um, as an as as an alternative asset class uh, uh, to add to your uh, that you may want to add to your investment portfolio. Um, uh, I, I hope you've, you've gained value from from tonight's uh, session. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think look, uh, we've oh, well, we've got my another one. We've got uh, what time frame of the future are, are you talking about? Uh, look, if I could predict the the future, then uh, <laughs> uh, look, I I, I think. Um, at the end of the day, look. Uh, if you look at Amazon, how long how long did Amazon um, uh, take? It took about 20, 25 years, right, uh, for it to get uh, get get to its highest valuation. Um, and obviously, uh, Catherine also called out. Uh, she's a huge fan of Tesla, and she thinks I, I can't remember the the. Uh, so I think she said Tesla was going to hit uh, uh, some some really really high valuation, and uh, obviously. Uh, a lot of the detractors uh, did not believe in it, but uh, but she uh, she believes so. So <laughs> JP JP uh, says uh, now, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So look, with that, folks, I, I think it's uh, we've come to our time, uh, and I hope uh, everyone uh, uh, gained something from tonight's presentation. And look, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Uh, and and you know feel free to share this with uh, friends and family. And uh, same time uh, next week, right? We will be uh, here. Uh, uh, same time next week uh, for crypto night, right? Copy time, uh, Thursday nights at eight p.m. So uh, with that, have a nice evening, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, have a good one. Good night. Thanks.